So, John, let's before we talk about how California reformed its cash bail system, give us a sense of how bail in California and presumably other places, if there was a a major difference in California, let us know. But I mean, you use an example of of two folks who were arrested in Los Angeles and, and charged with participating in a series of robberies as an example to indicate the uh, the problematic nature of the cash bail system in California. Walk us through that. Sure. And um, just to preface it, California, the bail system is, is fairly typical. Um, some states may have some better or worse idiosyncrasies, but California is basically similar, except that the bail amounts are exceptionally high in California. Um, so the, the basic way the system works is if you're accused of a crime, the judge has the option of either ordering that you're released Uh, called release on your own recognizance, um, where you simply promise to appear to come back to court and and hopefully do so, or the judge can set bail, meaning if you pay a certain amount of money, then you can be released. And at the end of your case, whether regardless of how it's resolved, whether you're guilty or not, you get your money back. So the money is there essentially as a surety to to ensure that you'll come back to court. The problem is that most people, the the, the criminal system, um, generally handles um, poor people. People don't have the money to pay the bail amounts. So either one one of three things happens. Either you don't pay and you sit in jail until your case is resolved in some uh, in different states. In California, if it's a misdemeanor, that's at least 30 days. If it's a felony, it's at least 90 days, and that can be significantly longer. That's choice number one. And, if, and we uh, should say, if you want to, we should say when we're talking about choice number one, it's irregardless of the of your guilt or innocence. I mean, that has not been established, and you have. Exactly. Plenty of circumstances where, I mean, that's why you have a trial, right? Is to find out if someone is guilty or not. And um, so you could just be incarcerated simply because of a lack of money. Exactly. And, and this is the, uh, the the backward world of the system where the punishment comes before the crime, before the guilty verdict. Um, you sit in jail waiting to get to trial to decide whether you're guilty or innocent uh, and and should be punished. Um, So that's choice number one. Choice number two is you can go to a bail bondsman and they'll put up the money, but they charge a fee. Now, whereas if you paid the full amount, you would get your money back at the end when you go through a bail bondsman, you're paying 10%, sometimes 8%, occasionally lower, but you don't get that money back. So uh, if your bail is set at $30,000, which is a relatively low-level felony bail in California, you're having to pay 3000 to the bondsman that you're never going to see again. And most people don't have $3,000 uh, that, that they can afford, and so they borrow money, they make payments, um, they sell the car, they can't make their rent, right? So it has significant um, impact on people. That's the people who actually can get the money together to pay the bond. The third option, and this is the one that really is, is, is taken by, by most people, is usually, and, and we're talking on your misdemeanor charges and your lower level felony cases, you get an offer. Hey, if you plead guilty, you can go home today, right? You get what they call time served. Just plead guilty. You get placed on probation. You get a conviction on your record. You have all kinds of consequences to that conviction. Your punishment may be doing community service or other things, but you get to go home. Now, people are pleading guilty whether they're guilty or not, because here's your choice. Hmm. 
I can give up my right to have a trial and give up my right to assert my innocence and go home today, or I can have a trial, but I'll have to wait two more months or three more months or even longer. So most people take the, I'll go home now and deal with the consequences later because jail is extremely miserable or because they're going to lose a job or because no one's able to take care of their child at home. And, so and that's the way the, the and, system works. And folks don't necessarily know the consequences of having that type of conviction on their record and the immediate uh, weight on the scale is to get out, I would assume, of get the out. prison. Yep. All right. Well, let me just ask you this before we go uh, to the reform. I mean, it, it's pretty sure. clear why the system needs to be reformed. Why is California... Why is California so high in terms of uh, bail relative to other states, as you said? Um, I actually don't know. I, I, I don't have an answer. Um, and it varies from county to county. And there have been studies done looking at it that don't really find a logic to why one county is greater than the other. Um, so I, mean, presumably, I'm sorry, I don't really right? have a good answer. But Presum if I can address one... Uh well, go, go ahead. Ed. Well, I mean, presumably there could be there, there could be a formula, right? Like, I mean, if you make thirty thousand dollars a year, you know, it's going to be 10 percent uh, relative. And then through another right. subsidiary formula as to what you're charged with or something like that. Right. Or uh, sure. Well, the way the way California works, it is they set bail schedules that are tied to what the charge is. But each county sets their own schedule. What they have not done is set the bail amount based on a person's ability to pay. Now, there's a court case that um, was decided back in January that said, if you're going to set bail, you've made the determination the person can get released, and so you have to set bail based on their ability to pay and have an inquiry or a hearing on that ability to pay. That case is being reviewed by the California Supreme Court, and it's going to be impacted by the new legislation. That's fascinating. And the, the theory is, if this person's safe enough to be out on bail for the communities, from the community's perspective, then that bail has right. to be somewhat uh, reasonable. And, and, and I, I would imagine, too, that the questions of, like, if you're a parent, if you have a job, um, are also other factors as to whether or not you are a flight risk should be considered. Absolutely. Absolutely. And those should be considered in a hearing in which we look at the individual circumstances. Unfortunately, the, the practice in our courts is that the hearings are very quick uh, and, and very little individual circumstances are considered. And, and this gets to really a key point that, that must be understood about the way the bail system works, because it also is the way the new uh, reform system works, is that there's a deliberateness to the way the system is set up. 97% of cases are resolved through some sort of plea deal. In other words, people plead guilty instead of going to trial. And if more cases went to trial or were litigated further, the courts would clog up and the machine of convicting people and sending them to jail or putting them on probation would slow down. And um, it would be more difficult to convict people, regardless of guilt or innocence. And so judges set bail knowing full well that people who are in custody plead guilty quicker. Fascinating. Prosecutors ask for bail because they know that that gives them this huge leverage, right? You're going to plead guilty because I already got you in jail. And so they're able to move through their caseloads very quickly. This is the most sort of important thing to understand about the way the system works. The bail system it's this is logic of efficiency. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, all right, let's take a break here, John. When we return, I want, sure. I mean, I think it's clear why we needed, uh, we need reform of this system, but let's talk about right. why California's uh, reform um, may turn out to be something even worse. I'm Sam Cedar. This is Ring of Fire Radio. I'll be right back with John Raffling in just a moment. 